Hi there, it's Rachel here. I'm the business manager here at Naturally Social. And today we're talking about Pinterest. So I'm going to work through a presentation we've created, a little bit of training to get you started with Pinterest. So let's just jump in. If you are not quite sure what Pinterest is, we're going to have a little bit of a talk and a bit of an overview about what it is, how to use it, and things to keep in mind next time you are on Pinterest. So if we start at the beginning, if you think about it as a story, so once upon a time, there's a platform. Uh, called Google search engine. That platform meets another aesthetically photo-driven platform called Instagram. They together have a child and that child is Pinterest. So a search engine, which also uses images just like Instagram. So how Pinterest works, like I said, it's a search engine. So it uses keywords to find what it is that you're looking for. So on this example here, we're talking uh, small garden ideas. So that keyword search phrase has been uh, put into the search bar just here. But not only that, it also includes uh, any relevant search terms based on what other people have been searching. So in this case, we searched small garden ideas, but actually other relevant search terms uh, it also include small garden ideas, modern, small garden ideas, UK, small garden ideas, flowers, and so on and so forth. Once you've put in your keyword phrase and you've hit search, this is what you're going to be able to see. So it will list you with a number of different pins that are going to basically give you what it is that you're looking for. So in this case, we're looking for those small garden ideas. And this is the pin that we're looking for. So we like that because it tells us what it is. Top 10 design tips for small gardens, but it's also got relevant photos on there as well. So that's something that we'd want to interact with. When we've interacted with it, we would then save it to a Pinterest board. So the top left there, they're the boards that we have for Naturally Social. We'll pin to those boards, categorize the content based on what it is that we're searching for, uh, what it is that we've seen, and put it into a board. In the bottom right there, you'll be able to see one of the boards that I have on my personal account. I love cats. Who doesn't love cats? But by clicking into the board, you'll be able to see those individual pins that you've saved. So just as a heads up, as we move forward, here's some key terms that you'll need for Pinterest. So users on Pinterest, they're called pinners. The content or the posts that are being displayed on Pinterest, they're called pins. Uh, the boards, like we just talked about, they are the uh, categorized places that you'll save the content that you like. Keyword or keyword phrases, those are the search terms you're using to find content. And repinning refers to you saving other content to your boards within Pinterest. So similar to how you might like a tweet or like a photo on Instagram, you're physically saving that to a board so you can refer back to it later. So here's some Pinterest stats. There are 459 million active monthly users on Pinterest. Not a lot of people are aware about how big Pinterest is as a platform. So that's worth keeping in mind when you're trying to work out whether or not it's the platform for you. 29.1% of the ad audience are women aged between 25 and 34 years old. We've got eight in 10 pinners, a Pinterest Pinterest makes them feel positive and in a world of social media there's very few places where positivity is still coming through. TikTok is obviously one of those but Pinterest prides itself on being a positive place to be. 89% of pinners are using the platform for purchase inspiration. That means that people are coming to Pinterest with the intention to buy. But 97% of the top searches are unbranded. So people are open to purchasing things that are not from the likes of Louis Vuitton or Nike or Adidas. They're going with an open mind to, like I said previously, to buy. And then lastly, approximately 1 billion videos are viewed per day. Now, a lot of people aren't aware that Pinterest actually uses video. Like most platforms, they are also moving to short form video, but there is also video content, which we'll chat about as we move through. So what are the ins and outs of Pinterest? Let's uh, jump in in case you're relatively new to the platform. So we've got some types of pins. So we have a static pin. A static pin is where the elements within that pin don't move. So it's an image with your keyword phrase. We then have video pins. So these can be the same way that you would have put video out on Instagram prior to them automatically being uploaded as reels. Uh, you would share that same content on Pinterest. We also then have idea pins. Idea pins are the short form video, but they're also a cross between stories and say TikToks. So while stories disappear within 24 hours, idea pins stick around for however long you leave them on there. And they also can be used in that short form like a TikTok, or they can be used similarly to stories where you can add multiple cards in there. So other pins that are available within Pinterest, they include carousel pins, so multiple images. 
you'll know that their carousel pins are in use because you'll see those three gray dots underneath, which indicates you can swipe across to see uh, other images. We also have product pins. So if you are a retailer, you want to be uploading your product pin, which will come from essentially your catalog, uh, including information about the product. And we also have promoted pins. So this pin just here, you can see has been promoted by Waitrose. And it, again, like most social media platforms, it's obvious when there's a promoted pin because it has to be outlined. So what is the aim of static and video pins? So with Pinterest, predominantly the aim is to take the user away from the platform. Now, when we compare that to most other social media platforms, their aim is to keep you in app. So TikTok wants to keep you in app. And obviously I'm sure most people can agree that you can quite easily slip down a rabbit hole and spend hours scrolling. But the aim for the static and video pin, like I said, is to take you away. So in this example here, we've got one of our social media blogs that we've written. The website is included on the front of the actual pin, but by clicking on the pin, it takes you to the blog on our website. The important part for Pinterest is to make sure that the user journey is on point, essentially. They want to know that your pins are taking them to where they should be going. So in this instance, we have a blog about why SEO is important. By clicking on that pin, it's taking you to the actual blog about why SEO is important. There's nothing worse than seeing a pin which is telling you something or asking you to find out or giving you top 10 tips for a hashtag strategy and you get there and the blog either isn't available, the web page has changed and therefore it's unavailable or it's a small mention within a larger blog and therefore the user experience isn't there because they're likely to then click off and go back and find an alternative pin. So the aim of idea pins is quite the opposite of a static and video pin. So the aim of short form video within Pinterest is to keep the user or the pinners within the platform. So instead of creating a pin that tells you that you need to click here to go and read the blog. So if we refer back to our previous example, we're telling people we have a blog about SEO, click on it, it will take you to our website where you can find out about SEO. In the examples that we have on screen right now, on the left, we have a short form video idea pin, which is something that we've shared on our TikTok and on our Reels. Uh, we've also put that onto YouTube Shorts. And on the right, we have more of an informative idea pin. This has a number of slides and it's providing information. This could be the content that you have within in the blog that you've converted into an idea pin, which will keep that user in the platform and still provide them with the same information. So staying in app. So what that refers to, like I said previously, is making sure that people are staying on Pinterest. So a lot of the times you'll find users will scroll through pins to find various different things to add to, say, a vision board. So in this example here, it's obviously home photos. So a user might not necessarily click through to find out who makes the door or who makes the bed frame, but they might be looking to collect those images as inspiration for when they move or buy a new home or redecorate their current home. So let's get pinning. So when we start to pin, if you open up the app, this is a screen that you'll be greeted with. This is your, essentially your home feed. Okay, we have a load of pins that will appear first. These ideas are populated based on your previous searches and what the algorithm thinks that you'll like. This is the same with the TikTok FYP and also with uh, YouTube Shorts. So it's pushing you content that it thinks you'll like based on what you've either searched or previously watched. Okay, next up here, we've got the magnifying glass. This is how you're going to search for your content. Simply tap on the magnifying glass, insert your keyword phrase, hit search, and it's going to bring you up with a list of every pin that kind of has used that keyword phrase. And then lastly, by tapping on your own profile icon here, you can go and find your boards and therefore refer back to any previous pins that you might have saved. So let's look at an example. So by clicking on the magnifying glass and then inserting your keyword phrase, we've searched for travel diary. It then produces you with a list of pins associated with that keyword phrase. Once you've found a pin that you like, simply hold and tap and then you'll be produced with these four icons. Click on the pin, that's how you're gonna save it to your board. If you would prefer to buy, if it's a product pin, for example, simply tap on the pin, tap again, it's gonna take you to the website that's associated with that pin.
So pinning to Pinterest. So what do you do when you uh, start putting content out on Pinterest? So a lot of people think it's quite complicated. Essentially, if you think about it from an SEO point of view, it can be relatively straightforward, but here's a few tips for you. So when you are creating a pin, make sure to include a relevant keyword phrase in your pin title. So the keyword phrase that we have on this pin here is, is social media updates. OK, you need to also make sure that you're including a relevant image or video. The algorithm for Pinterest is aware of images that you're including in your pin. For example, if you are saying that you have a recipe for an apple pie and your image is of shoes or handbags, it's not going to know where to categorize your pin. So it's important that the picture and the keyword phrase are relevant to each other. So once you're ready to post your pin, you'll simply click on create within your own profile. But this is going to give you more opportunities to include keyword phrases. Like I said before, make sure to think about SEO when you're posting to Pinterest. So you've got a title. This should be a, another keyword or phrase that you're going to use. So we have one already on the pin in this example here. It's hacks for Microsoft Teams. So you'd want to use a different keyword as your title. OK, next up, you want to describe your pin. So you can include additional keywords. So it could be that they're reading a social media blog, which is a keyword. And then you're going to describe it by adding additional words. That's going to help the algorithm to categorize the content that you're putting out. You also then want to make sure that you're linking to what you're telling people the pin is going to go to. So in this instance, we're going to use the link from our website and the blog about Microsoft Teams and tips for using it. And then you want to select the board that you're going to publish to. So that could be something relevant. So if you are a, a small business, it could be something to do with a specific product. In this instance, we're going to pin to our social media blog board, but we also have other boards, including social media for business, social media for small business. So we could be using one of those. So we're going to wrap up by talking about repurposing to Pinterest. So this is the main screen from the app again. At the top here, you can see the browse tab. This is where you're going to find those static and video pins that we've already talked about. These are based on the algorithm. So things that you've viewed previously and things that the algorithm thinks that you might like. We then have the watch tab. This is where you're going to find idea pins and short form video, which is going to be very similar to TikTok. Not many people are aware that, about the watch tab for Pinterest. So we do have an example of that now. So as we scroll through, it's showing you the multiple different examples of the short form video that's available on Pinterest. And it's so similar to Reels and to TikTok. So it's important not to be sleeping on it. And one of the things that we want to remember is that we need to repurpose the short form video content from TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube Shorts and be putting it over onto Pinterest. That's it. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about Pinterest, anything that I've talked about already, or anything that you're not quite sure about, then feel free to drop those in the comments below, or you can drop me an email directly. That's on the screen. Have a great day, guys. Take care.